Lord, I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest, and without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. Would you stand? Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour I need you. My one defense, my righteousness. Oh, God, how I need you. Sin unseen, your grace is more. When grace is found, it's where you are. And where you are, Lord, I am free. Holiness is Christ in me. It's where you are. Feel 
ocean at the sound of your great name every fear has no place at the sound of your great name the fun of me he has to For the word, word of God this morning from first from Second Corinthians chapter five and beginning with verse seventeen. It says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a what? A new creation. The old has passed away, and see the new has come. Everything is from God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting the trespasses against him, uh, or against them, and he has committed the message of reconciliation to us. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. 
He made the one who did not know sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Aren't you thankful for that? I cast my mind to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior on that cursed tree. for singing out this morning. It's great to hear our congregation join together giving praise to God. Why do we praise Him? Because He's worthy. Amen. He's the only one that's worthy to be praised. Lord, I am so amazed remembering the 
you took my sin and shame. You opened up my eyes and gave my soul new life. Now I'm forever changed. Wondrous cross, empty grave. Jesus, you belong to of all praise, King of peace, forever reign. Jesus, you alone are worthy of all praise, worthy of all sacrifice that you would give your life that you would take my place your love it has no end how strong it must have been to roll that stone away what was cross empty grave children go hang tight just a moment um, is it on all right um, Steve if you'll turn the red mic on please um, guess what's coming oh I heard it somebody whispered it somebody say it louder ah yeah. oh, look at them Macintosh kids are ready wow <laughs> mama's like I got two hours break yes <laughs> she's serving so you know hey uh vbs is coming and we want you to know about that we want you to be excited about that you can sign up for it online there's a there's a scan code there's also uh facebook you can get there We'd love to have you sign up your kids in advance we've already got workers and teachers and all those things happening but vbs is a great time to reach people with the gospel of jesus christ y'all have been with me a while know i'm a vbs kid Eight years old, I was saved during vacation Bible school. It means a lot to me. And so we're going to spend a moment of time in our service over the next three weeks, starting today, uh, until VBS gets here, where we're going to have specific prayer for vacation Bible school, for our workers, for our kids, uh, for the work of the Lord that's going to take place during the course of that week. Jason, if you'll go ahead and make your way up here. Um, here he is. Um, we'll have Jason Curlin. He's one of our newer deacons and a dad uh, here. Uh, some of our kids. And we'll have him lead us in prayer for VBS this morning. Um, and then uh, if you all will join us. Before he prays though. If you're working in VBS, raise your hand. 
If you're participating in VBS, raise your hand. All right. And we'll have all of our daycare classes participating in VBS as well. And so it's a daytime VBS this year. Uh, details will be in your, in your, in your handouts, uh, the bulletins you can get after church. Um, you can get online and see it. You can see it on Facebook. And so you're invited. Come be a part of what God's going to do here at Vacation Bible School. Jason, will you pray over our kids, over our workers, over VBS? Let us pray. Lord, we ask that you prepare the hearts and minds of the teachers, the volunteers, and the leadership of VBS this year. Lord, help them to guide the hearts and minds of the children who attend. Lord, that we ask, we ask that you fill them with the Spirit so that they choose to follow you and uh, so that it impacts your kingdom. We ask this in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jason. We hand that to Paul on your way down. Children, you may be dismissed at this time for Children's Church. You got Miss Allison at the back ready to receive you. You won't be so excited once you realize that. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have said that. Y'all don't know how much trouble I get myself in at home saying stuff that's dumb up here. Church, we are so glad to have you worshiping with us this morning. If you are new with us today, we thank you for being with us. We do have uh, guest cards in the pew in front of you. If you're new with us today or you haven't filled one of these out before, if you don't mind just grabbing that, filling that out, leaving it with us, there's an offering plate at the back as you leave on your left. Um, or you can uh, scan the code at the bottom and you can just type it in online. We would appreciate having some information about you, knowing that you visited with us and letting us know if there's any needs you have, any ways we can pray for you, uh, those kinds of things. So that's there available for you as well. If it, Well, it's a good day to get started with us if you're new with us today. We are starting a, a new series, a series on prayer. And I want to debunk some things before we get started. I'm not going to teach you how to pray. Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. He gives us a model prayer. We see lots of examples of prayer in Scripture. But there is no one right way or wrong way to pray. So if you're looking for somebody to say, this is how you do it, you're probably asking the wrong question. Now you can say, can you help me pray better? Can you, can you show me some ways that, that, that prayer takes place? And there's lots of examples of that in Scripture. And over the next uh, five or six weeks, I, I didn't count them up. One, two, three, four, five, six weeks starting today. Uh, we're going to be talking about prayer. And we're going to be looking at some specific examples of prayer in Scripture. What God did through prayer. How He used people in prayer. And how prayer transformed lives, nations, all the things. There's lots of that. And I have people say, well, teach us how to do intercessory prayer. We see intercessory prayer in the Bible. We see it there in Acts. When, when uh, uh, um, Peter's been arrested and the church is gathered together in the home and they're praying all night uh, for the release. They're interceding on behalf of Peter. And God does an amazing thing and he walks out. You know what we're not told? It's what they said in their prayers. They were gathered together in prayer. That's what we're told. But we're not told the specifics of how to do it. So I know I'm going to get asked for this all over. Well pastor how specifically we do, do we do that? As the Holy Spirit leads you. Pray. The key is not the how. The key is the that. Jesus introduces in Matthew chapter 6. The model prayer. Again in Mark. I talked about it last week. When we talked about our father. Who art in heaven. Um, he introduced it. When you pray. Pray like this. The key to prayer. Is not the how to's. It's the that's. That you pray. When you pray. As you pray. That's important. There's a lot of things you'll pick up, I hope, over the next six weeks of some specifics, some examples, some teachings along those lines. And so we're going to look at six weeks. We're going to see uh, several different prayers. Today we're going to look at praying to be brought into the presence of God or to experience the reward of prayer, which is being in the presence of God. So prayer for His presence. Next week, we're going to look at prayer for deliverance from distress. Anybody here distressed? We need some deliverance, don't we? We, we have that as a scriptural example. How about prayer for wisdom? I need that because apparently I didn't exercise that about five minutes ago. Prayer for wisdom. Knowing what to say and when to say it. What not to say. What to do and what not to do. Prayer to, to know how to rightly follow God. Prayer for wisdom. Um, prayer for forgiveness and restoration. Anybody else need that one other than me? I need both of those. Prayer for favor. 
Anybody need the favor of the Lord to shine upon your house? You know, a little bit of the favor of the Lord happened this morning. We got a little bit of rain, right? We need that. We need, but we, we need spiritual favor too. We, we need peace. We need comfort. We need a relief from the anxieties of life. The last week that we'll be looking at prayer is prayer for protection. Um, and I've gone back and forth over prayer for protection over the years. Because sometimes we ask God to get us out of situations when we've not yet learned the lesson of the situation. And so we got to balance that. But we're going to look at that because we do need protection. We need protection from the evil one. Jesus tells us that. Uh, deliver me from the evil one. And so, so we need that. And so we need to make sure we're going through some of these things. These are just six examples. There are so many. In fact, if you open the book of Psalms, you'll see lots of prayers. So you can't go through all those. We can't talk about all the different aspects. And as I said before, I don't want to talk to you about the, the a specific how-to. There are a hundred different methods to use to help your prayer life. Now, I'll be glad to talk to you one-on-one -on -one about some of those and give you some pointers. You know, you can use anacronyms like pray. You can pray through the Lord's Prayer. That's one of my favorite ways of praying through it. Look at some different aspects of prayer. There's lots of different ways to pray. If you're still struggling with prayer and you need a prayer partner, I could probably connect you with somebody who can help you along those lines to, to maybe improve your prayer life. This is not a, about the, the specifics of the function. But more about some aspects of some some encouragement, some generalities. And today, I want to get started as we as we started last week on Father's Day with the idea of who we're praying to, who is God, and that idea of Him being our Father, our Daddy, one who loves to be in relationship with us. And so today, I, I suggest to you that the reward of prayer is not answers to prayer. You've heard me say this before: the power of prayer is not the answers to prayer. But the purpose and the reward of prayer is being in the presence of our Father. And we learn to enjoy the presence of our Father. Those things we bring to Him. Those things we ask for. Those things we tell Him about. Those things that we need. All these other aspects of prayer are answered. At Southern Baptist Convention... Dr. Jeff Orge, who's, who's now our executive director uh, of, of the uh, cooperative, uh, executive board of the Southern Baptist Convention, he's, he's, the, he's the director of that, he, he, he shared his report, he preached his report, and he talked about this simple fact. I, I, I find this reality more and more in my life, and I, and I want to share it with you as we get started, because it fits this prayer model that I want to suggest to you. And that is the reward of prayer, the purpose of prayer is to be in the presence of God. Let's keep the main thing the main thing. The most important part is the connection with our Father. Jeff said there's many things that are important. But as a body of believers in Jesus Christ, there's one thing that's most important. And that is winning the loss to Jesus. And he says, as a convention of churches, we need to not miss the main thing because we get so focused on the other things that are important. So if you only get focused on, give me this day my daily bread, which is important, especially if it has butter and some garlic and, you know, all the stuff on it. It's important. Give me my daily bread. But it's not the most important. Jesus says, I have food that you do not know about. What is Jesus talking about? His relationship with His Father. The doing of the Father's will. That closeness and oneness with the Father filled Him in such a way that the food became secondary. So sometimes we get caught up on something that's important. Food. But we can miss the most important. Relationship. And so I want to, as we get started today, and we're getting ready to get into some scripture and look at this. We want to keep the main thing the main thing, but we don't want to forget there are other important things. And so after today, we're going to look at some of the other important things. But the main thing, the main thing is are you in right relationship with the Father? Do you feel comfortable entering His presence through prayer? Do you realize that God desires that connection with you? A personal connection. Through prayer to the one who created the universe and everything that is in it. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew's recording of what Jesus, uh, t uh, of what we call the model prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. But we're going to start in verse 5. And we're going to focus on verse 6 and 7. 
He says, whenever you pray, Matthew chapter 6, verse 5, whenever you pray, that's the key. When you pray, when you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have the reward. So he starts with the don't. Don't be flashy. Don't be public. Don't be look at me kind of thing. Prayer is not for the person next to you to see you. Prayer is for you to connect with God. That's important. Verse 6, he begins to give us an example or to show us a way to prepare ourselves to connect with our Father who is in heaven. He says, but when you pray, that's the second time, verse 5, when you pray, verse 6, when you pray, there's an expectation of prayer. He says, go into your private room, shut your door, and pray to your Father who is in secret. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles. They imagine they'll be heard because they're many words. Don't be like them. Because your Father knows the things you need before you ask Him. And from this introduction to the model prayer that Jesus gives, we're going to see some principles that we need to apply to our prayer life. This is the key to every additional lesson on prayer. This is the foundation of everything else that's going to happen. And the very first point is when you pray. There's an expectation of prayer. The second point is, your prayer is personal. It's between you and the Father. Parents, I want you to hear this. And you're going to say, well, Pastor, you're, you're, you're talking both sides of your mouth. You, well, maybe a little bit. Your kids need to see or hear you praying from time to time. You ever, you ever hear about the, the story of the couple uh, who, who got married, the young couple? They, they just got married. This is not somebody I canceled because they wouldn't have happened if it was. No. There's a young couple. They just got married. They're getting along great. Everything's wonderful. You know, they go on their honeymoon. They come back. They're, everything's great. And then things are going on well. And a little bit into their marriage, a few months later, things get a little tense. Y'all never experienced tenseness in your marriage, did you? Husband probably said something stupid. Wife probably didn't hear what he really said, but, you know, she read into it. And they're bickering. And the husband looks at her and says, let's go to the room. She says, all right. And they march to the room. And they get there, shut the door, and they stare at each other. And she says, well, what do we do now? He says, I don't know. My parents, when they would argue, they'd always go to the room. If we don't teach the next generation, set the example, show them that reality, let them walk in. You know the most powerful? Two things, and it's the same thing, two different people in my life, this has been an example of. My grandmother, when we'd spend the night with her, when I was young, she would go to her room. I don't know what time it was. It seemed really early to me back then, but it it may not have been. Nine o'clock, whatever it was, she'd go to her room. She'd read her Bible, and she would pray. We weren't to disturb her. But we could walk by her door and we could hear her. Or we could peek in and see her. Spending time with the Lord. Allison's grandfather did the same thing. He was an out loud prayer. Not to be heard. He was in his closed room. But we knew he was spending time with the Lord. What a powerful thing that is in the life of a young person. To see prayer being a priority. Jesus says, when you pray, this is how you do it. You find that private place. It's between you and God. But it is not wrong for somebody else to see you in the seriousness of your prayer. Remember Hannah from the Old Testament? She was praying fervently before the Lord. Now the priest oversaw her fervency and thought she was drunk. Because she was so in the spirit, he thought she was in the spirits. And she explained to him what her prayer was about. And he was touched. And the Lord was touched. And she had a baby a year later. From barren to mama in a year. Because of the power of prayer. It's not wrong to be overheard praying. But you don't pray to be heard. 
You pray and you talk to the Father. You get in His presence. He tells us here in verse 6. But when you pray, go to your private room. Shut your door and pray to your Father who is in secret. God is not in secret hiding from us. God is in a place that we just can't see and experience in the flesh here on earth. His secret place is His heavenly dwelling place. And His secret place is available to us through prayer. He's always available. Always available to us through prayer. He says, go to this place and pray. Now, that's foundational. That isn't the reward yet. That isn't the, 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 the presence yet. It's, that, that's a way to begin to enter the presence. He says, when you are in this place where it's just between you and God and you're seeking his face. He says, your father who sees in secret will reward you. When you're in that prayer place and you are separated out to spend time with God, it says your Father will reward you. Not that He might. He will. Not that He's obligated to. It's because He wants to. He's going to reward you. Now, He's not going to reward you by putting money in your pocket. He's not going to reward you by getting your boss fired. He's not going to reward you by fixing all the things that are wrong in your life. And you're not going to necessarily wake up all healthy the next day. How's he going to reward you? When God shows up, that's the reward. The reward is being in his presence. When you seek him out from your secret place. And he's dwelling in his secret place. It says he will reward you. How's he going to reward you? He's going to invite you in. He's going to invite you in. To that inner sanctuary. To that holy place. To that place where peace and comfort can be restored. Where anxieties can be relieved. That, that secret place where wisdom can be given or granted. He's going to invite you into that secret place. And spending time with God is the reward. And that's the most important thing. Now over the next few weeks we'll talk about some of the things we talk about. While you're in that place of reward. While you're in the presence of God. Yeah, we're going to ask as Jesus teaches us to. Lord, provide for my needs. Lord, forgive me of my sins. Lord, protect me or deliver me from the evil one. We'll talk about some of those things over the next several weeks. And those are additional rewards that happen. But those are the smaller rewards compared to being in the presence of our Father. Being in the presence of the one who loves us without condition. Being in the presence of the one who, who has the power to condemn us to eternal hell or reward us for eternity in heaven. And he's chosen us as his children to be in that holy place. And so as we begin to look at this, we need to understand God's got a reward in mind for us. And that reward is to know us and to make himself known to us. He wants to know us we got to open ourselves up to him. Oh, he already knows us. He tells us that. He says, don't, don't babble like the Gentiles. Get myself in trouble again. I'm going to use some wisdom and not say what I was thinking. Some people communicate with a lot of words. I, I, I joke all the time. My pay is by the word. That's why I preach so many minutes. I get paid by the word. Some of us communicate with a, a lot of words. Some of you know this and you try to explain this to me. Pastor, it's not the amount of words that you use to get the point across. You can let us go earlier. We got it. Sum it up. Get to the end. There is an end to every sermon. You need to find it, Pastor. Come on. It's not by the amount of words that we use. It's getting into His presence. Don't babble like the Gentiles. Because you said it 50 times instead of one time doesn't mean you're more likely to get it. Sometimes when you say it 50 times, you're more likely to get smacked. Because we grow weary. <laughs> Our kids know this. They've learned this secret. Why do we treat God different than we treat somebody else? Why do we nag at God when we know He already knows our heart? When we know he already knows our every need. 
when we know he already knows our every request? Well, we're told to take them to him. We're told to name them one by one. We're told to be at his, at his feet. So I'm not telling you that's wrong. It's right. But the more words you use doesn't make it more likely he's going to answer your prayer. I think what happens sometimes is we don't have a big enough God. We're not recognizing his ability to do all the things that we asked him the first time. We treat God like he's like us and his hearing aids aren't working. So we say it louder and we say it more often. It's like trying to talk to somebody in a different language or somebody who's deaf. Just because you yelled it doesn't mean they're any more likely to understand it. But God knows us. And he knows our hearts. And he understands sometimes out of the anxieties of life we speak a little louder than we ought to. We speak a little harsher than we maybe ought to. He knows that. He understands that. And he loves us anyway. He's called us to that special place. He's called us to that special place not to babble like the pagans. Remember Elijah on Mount Carmel? He had the 500 prophets of Baal that he was praying against. You got two examples of great prayer, don't you? The guys who babble all day long. They can't get any fire started. But oh, Elijah... With just a few words. Lord, now's the time. All right. Whoosh. And the fire comes. It wasn't by many words. It was by faith that God showed up and made a difference. It's because of the relationship that Elijah had with the Father in heaven. Where they were close and they understood each other and they were intimate. And out of that relationship, Elijah knew what to do. And God responded. And we need to practice that relationship. Not by many babbling words. It's not by saying the right words in the right order at the right time. It's not magic. It's by building relationship with our Father who wants to give us all the good things. It's like by building that relationship where He wants to reward us. We don't have to babble. In Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, this become my life verse, my life mission. Let's look at that. Because I just blanked. You ever do that? Yeah, there we go. Thank you. Somebody said it. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these other things will be given unto you. So when we begin to pray, this is in the prayer passage. It's talking about the anxieties of life. And how sometimes we get so overwhelmed. And what does God want us to do? He wants us to seek first his kingdom. What is the reward of prayer? Seeking God and connecting with him. And him showing up. If you seek first my kingdom, he says. His righteousness, being right with him. He says, then all these other things will be given unto you. When you go to prayer, Matthew 6.33, what is the main thing? God is. When you seek first my presence and my righteousness... My kingdom, my righteousness. He says, when you seek me, the, the, the primary point of prayer is being connected to God, our Father who loves us. When you seek me, all these other things are going to get taken care of. All your other needs are still needs. All your requests are still important. All these other aspects of prayer are still valuable. But we start not with those, but we start with our Father. Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. My Father, our Father, actually, our, it's communal. Our Father, who art in heaven. He didn't start with forgive me. He didn't start with woe is me. He started with recognition of who God is. And we should too. And we should recognize that as the reward of prayer. Matthew 6, Seek first His kingdom. His righteousness. When we seek rightness with God. We seek connection to God. When we seek oneness with God. He says then I'm going to take care of all those other requests too. It's amazing how that works. When we connect with our Father in heaven. Why does it work like that? Why does Matthew 6.33 work every time we use it? Because we keep the main thing the main thing. And when we do, he handles all the lesser things that are still important. Now I want you to turn over to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. We're going to look at one more, one more set of passages here. I'm going to read these to you. And we're going to look at the example. Of what God is able to do. 
Because when we keep God first, when we keep God in the center, when we keep God as the main thing, here's the result. The Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Ephesus, he says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. What's Paul doing? He's setting us up here. He's teaching us what we've already learned from Jesus. When I kneel, that's a position of prayer, before the Father, the person of connection in prayer. So catch that as the foundation. Let me, let me finish this passage out and we'll come back and we'll look at the individual statements here. For this reason I kneel before the Father from whom every family on earth, uh, every family in heaven and on earth is named. I pray that he may grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with power in your inner being through his spirit and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. I pray that you being rooted and firmly established in love may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the length and the width and the height and the depth of God's love and to know Christ's love that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond what we ask or think according to the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. I tell you, we're going to get some examples of prayer. We're going to have examples of prayer over the next several weeks. And this is one of them. This is Paul's example of a powerful prayer that focuses in and starts in the right place. It starts on the person of God, it starts on the connection to God. And it relies on the power of God. So we're going to look at four things here to, to, to sum up this section. The position of prayer. Matthew chapter 6, we're told to go to our room, to a secret place, to a private place. Paul says, I kneel before you. He's in recognition of the lordship of our Father who is in heaven. He's in the proper position in a place where he can commune with God. Without being disturbed. He's in the proper position. Because when you're kneeling. Your enemy. Has the upper hand. They think. But they don't realize the power. Of prayer. And the protection. Of our father. He kneels. He humbles himself. He submits himself. To the presence of almighty God. So the position of prayer. It's important. He kneels before the Father. The request of his prayer. Did you catch what he requested? He says, for this reason I kneel and I pray, verse 16, that God would grant you, look at this, the riches of his glory to be strengthened with his power and that Christ would dwell in you through faith. His request is that the strength through the Holy Spirit would come upon the people. His request is that God's strength would be accessible to those who are seeking it. We need the strength of God, don't we? When we're in right relationship with God, in right position before God, we are being strengthened by God. And that's his request. The purpose, the, the, the is to be with God. The specific opportunity there. The purpose uh, in this prayer. Is that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. You know there's some prayers God doesn't have to answer. In fact he tells us he doesn't have to hear our voice. If we're living in sin. If we haven't received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. We're just babbling. At that point. But there's also prayer that God says he cannot ignore. The prayers of a contrite heart. The prayers for salvation through Jesus Christ. He has promised that when we are in right relationship with him. When we are holy as he's holy. When our sins have been forgiven. That we will have perfect communion with him. And he will hear us. And he will answer us from his place on high. In heaven. And he will then begin to work on our behalf. 
for His glory and good. The purpose of the prayer is for the strength of God to change hearts. For the salvation of the lost. For the healing of those who are saved but sick because of sin. His prayer is specific to that. That you'd be strengthened with power in your inner being through the Spirit so that Christ would dwell in you fully. And I pray that you'd be rooted and established in love. Rooted and firmly established in love. That you will be able to comprehend with all the saints how much God loves you. Do you know how much God loves you? He loved you enough to die for you. But before He died for you, He loved you enough to suffer for you. He loved you enough that the Scripture says, He who knew no sin, the sinless one, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, He who had never sinned, became our sins. That's just not recognizing our sins. That's not just forgiving our sins. It's Jesus physically took our sins upon himself and received the punishment that we deserve for those sins. He became our sin on the cross of Calvary. That's how much he loved us. He loved us enough not just to die for us, but to become our sinfulness. That he who knew no sin became our sin. Why? So that those who would believe in him and call upon his name could be saved. He loved us so He could reconcile us to the Father in heaven. He loved us so that He could spend eternity with us and provide us that place that He's prepared for us in John chapter 14 where He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And by going to prepare a place for you, I'm going to come back and I'm going to receive you unto myself so that where I am, therefore you may also be. He wants us with Him. That's how much He loves us. He's chosen to spend eternity with you in heaven. He's chosen you. That's how much He loves you. We can't comprehend this, but Paul's prayer is that we would be able to comprehend with all the saints how much God loves us. We need to know the reward, the depths of the love of Christ. And look at this. He wraps it up with a statement that, that, that I share often as I pray. To him who is able. The way I learned it was, is to do more than we could ask or imagine according to his glorious riches. Now to him who is able to do above and beyond what we ask or think according to his power that works within us. Here's the key. To receive the reward is to understand the Father. To understand the Father, we've got to enter his presence. To enter his presence, we've got to separate ourselves from the distractions of this world. And we don't do it to be seen or heard. We do it to be in relationship with Him. To be connected to Him. To be known by Him. He doesn't need us to tell Him all the things. Because He already knows. Scripture is clear about that. Don't use many words because I already know all the things you need. He tells us in Matthew 6. Don't babble like the pagans. I already know everything you need. But he still wants us to tell him. When you get a little bit older. Growing out of childhood. You realize. Every time mama came to you and said. Do you have something you need to confess? She already knew all the things you had done. She was just waiting on you. To allow her into your presence. So that she could help you heal from it. Sometimes she helped you heal with the toe of the shoe. Sometimes she helped you heal with time out or grounding or whatever it is, your discipline of your house. But she wanted to help you heal. She wanted to restore you. But you can't be restored until you enter the presence. And when you enter the presence, God already knows all the things you've done. But he still wants you to tell him. He already knows all the things you need. But he still wants you to ask him. He already knows the reward he's going to give you and the answer to your prayers that are coming. But he still wants you to seek them out. It's for us to grow in our faith. To him who is able. God is able. To do more than you can ask or imagine. You ever pray for more than you can imagine? I've never had because if I can ask it, I can imagine it, right? But he's able to do things I can't even think of. 
He's able to do things in ways that I haven't even comprehended. To him who is able to do you more than you can ask or imagine. Imagine, according to what? His glorious riches. He's got all the power. He created everything. He's able to hold the sun in place. He is able to part the waters. He is able to raise the dead. He is able to turn you and me from horrible sinners into holy saints. For him who is able... To do more than you can ask or imagine according to his glorious riches. He is willing to touch you in a special way. Because it's according to his power that works. So that he receives the glory in the church. And in Jesus Christ for all generations forever and ever. We do it for his glory. But it is for our benefit. So this morning. As we begin this journey. In looking at the prayers of scripture. As we begin to look at these different ways in which we can come before the Father. We need to start by realizing we need to pray for His presence. We need to ask Him to bring us into the throne room. To connect us to Himself. We need to realize that the reward of our prayers is knowing Him in His fullness. As He knows us in our fullness. He knows us in our fullness and He still loves us. And He's chosen to use us for His glory. Man, that is special. Isn't that a Father that you'd want to commune with? Our Father who is in heaven has called us into His presence through prayer. So that we can know Him better. And so that He can begin to meet our many needs. He knows what they are before we even ask. But he needs us to come into his presence. Paul says, for this reason, I'm on my knees. So that you can have right relationship with the Father. And experience uh, all of his glory. All of his power. All of his healing. All of his fullness. So that you can experience the vastness of his love. For this reason, I get on my knees. To be in the presence of God. You can't do that without Jesus Christ. As your Lord and Savior. So let me ask you this morning. Do you know Jesus? That's really step one. Have you asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? If not will you do it today? Scripture tells us that if we believe in our hearts. That Jesus is the Son of God. And that he was raised from the dead on the third day. And if we confess him as Lord of our lives, that we will be saved. Do you believe who Jesus is? And have you confessed him as Lord? It's that simple. To be transformed and to become a child of God. Do you need to do that this morning? If you're a child of God, let me just ask you. Have you been practicing being in the presence of God? And I know today there's 120 people in this room. But are you able to get alone with God just for a few moments? I'm going to lead us in prayer. And just say, God, I need you. I need to experience you. In that unique and special way that only comes when we're alone together. Maybe you need to say to God, help me day by day. To prioritize spending time in prayer. It will transform your life. And it will transform your relationship with him. priority is to know him and as you grow in your relationship with him he will reveal all these other things to you he wants to bless you in a spiritual way but it starts with coming into his presence humbly seeking him above all else and we'll talk about the other things later are you where you need to be before the lord this morning let's pray Father, we know that we are called to be in your presence. When we pray, make us a people of prayer. So we can affirm that we do pray. That we seek you out. That we desire that oneness, that connection, that relationship with you. That is above all else. Father, for many, we seem to be 
in dry spells more than we're in blessed spells. I just ask that you would renew and refresh each one here today as we seek to be in your presence in this very moment. And as we commit or recommit ourselves to be in your presence every day. Father, it's our first prayer that those who don't know you as Lord and Savior would be saved. Save the lost. Forgive their sins. Restore them to righteousness. As your word teaches, make them a new creation in Christ Jesus. A child of yours. Child of God. Father, for all of us who are children of the King. Your children. Father, grow us in our faith. And connection to you. And may you grant the many needs of our lives. As we share them with you. But may the most important thing stay the most important thing. That we are connected to you for eternity. Through Jesus Christ your son. Father help us to pray. And as we pray help us to experience the reward of prayer. Your presence. We ask this in Jesus name. Amen. Church, if you need to respond this morning, we're going to have a time of song. And as we sing, the altars are open. I'll be here to receive you. If you need Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you need to come and just seek God on your own in prayer, if you need to come for church membership or baptism, if you need to come for any other spiritual reason, I'm going to be here at the front to receive you. This is your opportunity to respond to God. If He's spoken to your heart, won't you come? Stand with me. We're going to sing. be changed, renewed, flowing from the grace that I found in you. And Lord, I come to know the weaknesses I see.
seated for just a moment. Got a couple of announcements for you, um, a couple of prayer points as well. So we'll start with those. Uh, Trina Holy Cross had a had a major surgery this week. Um, had a, a bypass on a vein, not an artery. Uh, major uh, bypass surgery. It went so well. She was supposed to go to physical therapy rehab for two weeks. She went straight home. And so God is good and he's healing her. And so we praise the Lord for that. Continue to pray for her in recovery. She's the only pressing prayer need um, or, or new one. We have a lot of continuing prayer needs. We need to continue to remember Jean. Uh, she goes through her cancer treatments. Um, Melvin's still in the nursing home uh, um, down in Morristown. Uh, we still have um, hip surgery. Help me. Pat Carter. Thank you. Um, Terrell Bishop, still still uh, in his health condition, and it's a long-term recovery prayer need. Um, we have Alyssa uh, Dodds having uh, hip dysplasia surgery. And if you want details on that, um, Tiffany was telling me words I didn't know, <laughs> medically speaking. And so it's a lot for a, a young person, but uh, she'll have one side done, and then after she recovers, I think the other side will have to be done. And so... Remember Alicia Dodds as she goes through this to, to get that all straightened out over the next couple of weeks. What day is her surgery, Tiffany? This Friday. And so uh, appreciate your prayers for them. Did I miss any, any of those others? Anthony continued treatment for his brain uh, tumor and, and, and procedures. So I want to keep Anthony in our prayers. Thank you. All right, here's a couple of announcements. Men's Bake Off tonight at 6 o'clock. Guys, this is what you're after. Woo. Come on, come on. Guys, this is what you're after. There we go. <laughs> the golden spatula. Spoon. Whatever it is. You want this. It says bake off champ. Now you can't use it to eat off of because it's been painted gold. But you want it just the same. So come tonight at 6 o'clock. Everybody's invited. We're going to eat. We're, we're going to practice our ability to judge one another as Christians. And we're going to judge who's got the best dessert. And so uh, come uh, be a part of eating and, and fellowship and having a good time tonight. Um, next Saturday, men, you have a bowling night. See John Nash for more information on that. Uh, the Next Sunday night is family game night. We're going to have all kinds of fun things. Plan to be here. We're going to have, we're working on something kind of cool, kind of special. Uh, so come be a part of that. You're not going to want to miss the opportunity to see somebody act kind of crazy uh, during that game night. Um, VBS, how can you be a part of VBS? Pray. Start practicing prayer for VBS. Day by day, pray for VBS. Pray for the kids, pray for the workers, pray for, for all the things that are going to be happening during VBS. Pray for Gay and I that as we lead up here, we don't do anything too crazy. Um, but we keep the main thing, the main thing, the focus on Jesus Christ. If you want to bring things, there's a list, I think, in the bulletin, maybe on the screen. Um, See Allison or Carla. You can drop those off either in the office or in the narthex downstairs. Uh, we'd love to have you participate in whatever way you can. Um, work, if you're a worker and you need something, please ASAP. Get that to, to Carla or to Allison so we know what it is. Um, seniors, senior adults. Fourth of July, there's a cookout at my house that morning. So come to my house. We're going to have a, a seniors fellowship in the morning of the 4th of July, I think, I think we said 11 o'clock. Is that what it says on the screen? 11 to 1. Perfect. You can bring fireworks if you want to. Yeah, we got plenty of room to shoot fireworks. I got garden hoses. We can put them out. <laughs> come, come and enjoy that. I need to know if you're coming. So please give Carla a head count. You know why I say Carla? Because if you tell me, I won't remember. So please tell Carla about that. And finally, um, we have camp for our teenagers this week. Teens, are, who's going to camp? And you're still a teen. Are you going to camp? No? Hannah, Joy, you're not going? Oh, she's not going. So I thought she was going to be there too. If you're an adult going to camp, who are you? Jennifer, Chris, Allison. Is there anybody else? All right. Pray for them this week. Um, it's going to be hot. 
last week at camp, the first week of Student Fusion, they had 30 first-time decisions for Jesus Christ, 80 total decisions. It was a great first week of camp. We're looking for a great second week of camp, which our kids are participating in. So we praise the Lord for that. Pray for them this week as they come and go. Sarah Wickersham, Paul's daughter, is the camp director uh, for, for Student Fusion. Pray for Sarah. Uh, pray that Leanna doesn't make her crazy. No, pray for, pray for her. She leads camp. It's a great responsibility and a great opportunity. She does a great job. And we're thankful for her. She could use our prayers as well. Thank you, Paul, for that. And finally, preacher does know how to end. It just takes him a while to get there. Thank you for giving to the financial ministry of the church, for the, for the missions we're able to do, for the daily things we're able to do. The offering plates are there at the back as you leave on the left. We thank you uh, for your contributions each and every week. And I was reminded this week that Giving is an act of worship, and sometimes when we don't talk about it, don't mention it, we miss that opportunity to worship the Lord through giving. And so I, I, I wanted to mention that this morning. We thank you for your generosity. We thank you for your faithfulness. But most important, we want to, to encourage you as a way to worship the Lord, to have that opportunity uh, each week as we come together and as we do these things. Um, to recognize His uh, um, uh, blessing on us as we in turn bless others through the work of the church. I'm going to conclude. I'm going to turn over to Paul to close us in prayer. I'll greet you by the front door as you go. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. To remind us to seek your presence when we pray. And uh, as we, uh, each and every day, we want your presence. And we need you as we sang earlier this morning. Lord, I need you. Every hour I need you. And uh, we know that uh, as we seek you, that you can be found. We pray that uh, you would uh, intercede on behalf of those who we mentioned just a moment ago that are either undergoing surgeries, recovering from surgeries, uh, fighting cancer. Uh, we pray that you would uh, draw alongside. May they know your presence. We pray for our teens as they uh, go to uh, Fuge Camp this week. I pray that your Holy Spirit's already at work, uh, that you would uh, speak to their hearts, that uh, lives will be transformed and changed uh, this week because of their uh, surrendering to you and what you have in store for their lives. I pray for the leaders. I pray for Sarah as uh, she uh, leads and um, the things that uh, she does behind the scenes that Often folks take for granted that uh, can be very stressful. So we pray that uh, you would ease her mind and give her strength as she carries her around the little one all week long and and does her job too. Um, pray for uh, each and every one who leaves this place today that uh, uh, will be an instrument of your peace to be a testimony uh, before men. It will be boldly uh, claim Jesus as our Savior and uh, to lead others to faith in you. In your name we pray. Amen.